Hey, it's CrossFit Tracking with just a quick video to give you eight points five weeks later with the Polar Unite. Just sort of a short overview of eight things that I've noticed over the course of the last five weeks in testing and using the Polar Unite. And want to also let everybody know that I'm going to try to convert the website and the YouTube channel over from CrossFit Tracking to CF Tracking just to get in a little bit better trademark compliance. Um, but number one, the screen, the screen is still good. The screen is still super brilliant, super bright. Um, it's about four times brighter than the most common transflective screens on the other Polars and Garmin and Koros and Sunto. Uh, still incredibly great readability and overall just a beautiful screen. Number two, the notifications are very problematic. I don't know what Polar is doing versus what Coro, Sunto, and Garmin. I've never had the kind of notification issues that I have with the Polar watches, and it's across the board with the Polar line. So the notifications don't always appear, and sometimes they will appear, and then sometimes you'll get a bulk of notifications when somehow it syncs up with the watch at a certain point in time, and sometimes you'll get the notifications a second time where it'll just rebuzz um, for no apparent reason. Number three, the responsiveness of the touchscreen is really good, especially compared to the, the Ignite. Um, so the Ignite wasn't always as, as smooth and easy of a touchscreen. There was more of a lag with the processor. So the Unite has fixed those problems. Touchscreen's still working good. Uh, number four, the wrist raise is just not working as often as I would like it to. So oftentimes, one of the problems with the notifications, you have to raise your wrist in order to get the notification to appear. And if you don't do it quickly enough, after you get a buzz on the watch, you'll have to you know, swipe up to get the notification to, to be able to read it. But the wrist raise isn't quite working as often as I would like it to. Number five, the connected GPS is somewhat problematic. It's not hard to get the GPS to connect but I'm having a hard time with just the distance. The distance seems off. I don't do a lot of running. This is a review site, mostly for CrossFit training, um, but the GPS is just doesn't feel accurate when it's using the Connect GPS off the phone. Number six, and this is a big selling point for Polar, is their nightly recharge, which is a combination of the autonomic nervous system rejuvenation, which has to do with beat to beat intervals and heart rate variability and breathing rate, and then coupled with the sleep score, which is just an overview of all these different stats. So there's a couple of things that are sort of problematic, although I still feel like they have a great combination of all these elements. But the problematic things, the autonomic nervous system estimate is based on four hours of sleep, starting at about an hour after you've fallen asleep. So if you have a disturbance in the beginning part of the night, the stats are gonna get skewed because it's only a four hour chunk of time. Secondly, if you've had too much to drink or had some alcohol before bed, your heart rate variability is gonna be higher in the beginning of the night, but it's gonna decrease over time as your heart rate variability settles out as the alcohol flows through your system. Well, this is sort of problematic in that those last hours, you don't quite get an estimate of how much you recharge. And that leads to the sleep score. They don't always take into account the length of time you're asleep relative to past times or the number of sleep cycles. Um, obviously, it's calculating the number of sleep cycles, it's calculating the percentage of time you're in deep sleep, but it's comparing that to an average. So if you're sleeping, I typically will get five to six hours of sleep during the week and then maybe seven to eight hours on the weekend. So I'll get a sleep score that's almost as good in a seven to eight hour sleep versus a five hour sleep. Because when I fall asleep within five, on the five hours of sleep night, I sleep the whole time, the continuity is higher. The percentage of deep sleep or REM sleep relative to the total time of sleep is a higher percentage. Whereas if I sleep eight hours and maybe, the, maybe I'm moving around a little bit more because I'm just sort of staying in bed and getting a longer night's sleep and the percentage of REM, the percentage of deep sleep is not as high relative to the stats, but that's just because I was in bed longer. Um, so the percentage is not as, as important as the amount of time in deep sleep or in REM. So there's a couple of sleep issues. Number seven, the fit, the feel of this is still great. It's super light. The watch itself weighs just 19 grams, the lightest on the market. And as we you know, noted in the other reviews, this isn't a full review. You can check out the YouTube channel for a full review. The uh, heart rate monitor is directly flush against the, sense, the skin. So it's super comfortable. And number eight, the training load. Obviously, I said in the full review with the Unite, there's not a training load aspect built into the watch. It's not built into the Polar Flow app. So if you only have the Unite, you're not going to get the training load aspects that are crucial or very beneficial for CrossFit training. But there is a fix for those of you that have had a Polar device that had Training Load Pro built into it. Because if you don't delete that previous watch, 
from your polar um, experience, your polar you know use, your polar um, online portal, then you will still get the training alone aspect. So it acts almost like it's just it's just like an ignite because I still have a polar um, watch still tied into the system even though I sold it on eBay. So you will still get those stats if you still have the watch built into your profile. So it's a way to get around it, still be able to get the Training Load Pro while using a better, faster version of the Ignite, for example. So that's eight things that I've noticed over the last five weeks of using it. Just wanted to give a quick update as well as let everybody know I'm gonna to try to convert everything over from CrossFit tracking to CF tracking. So I might be able to connect more with CrossFit at large or some of the CrossFit supportive groups out there. Again, thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and definitely trying to build a subscriber base, so please subscribe.